Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live here in the city of Joppa, uh, just outside of Tel Aviv. In fact, as we were walking up here just a little moment ago, it sounded like cruise missiles were being launched out from in the Mediterranean. Could sound at a great deal distance and of course a little bit further north from our position here. We could not actually see anything and maybe it was not. But as we know right now there is a major war that has been raging in Aleppo and it's only getting worse day by day. But one of the reasons why I came right here to Joppa to report on the news today was to give you guys a feel for this famous city that holds so many biblical backgrounds to begin with. All the way from Jonah who left this city here. Uh, trying to avoid going to Nineveh. He wanted to go to Tarshish, as we know the biblical account there. Uh, and somewhere along the way in the Mediterranean and behind me here, this sea got extremely violent with its waves. And of course, the, sea, the captain of the ship wanted to know who was causing all of this. So they, they drew lots, so to speak, to see, and it fell on Jonah. Well, then he found out that Jonah had sinned and didn't obey God and was supposed to go to Nineveh. So they threw him overboard. The great fish swallows him. And somewhere north of here, spit him out on the uh, seashore. I believe that he may have ended up either in modern-day Lebanon or even that of Syria, the borders of Syria there. Because according to the biblical account, it was like about a three-day journey for him to be able to get from that spot there to get to Nineveh, which is where today is modern-day Mosul. Mosul, where there's been heavy battles still going on there. In fact, really the only true fighters against ISIS in this area are the U.S.-backed Kurds. Well, I kind of like to correct that. Supposedly, they're backed by the United States. The U.S. is really bad about letting Turkey push them around. They're also supported by the Russians as well. Russia has given them air support before. But these people, who are an honorable people, have been fighting against ISIS. The only to me, about the only genuine soldiers in the entire battle are those of the Kurdish people. And there's some belief that there is the accounts written in the book of Isaiah that speaks about the modern-day Kurds being from a time long ago and that it was biblically wrote about that. I'll be going into that a little bit later this week, but the really thing that I wanted to share with you right now uh, is I wanted to look at a couple of passages here from the book of Nahum because I do believe that when Jonah left this city here that later Nahum writes about this city in a very prophetic overtone of the things that are happening that we have actually been seeing come to pass in modern days because Nineveh still is in just on the northern outskirts of Mosul. And as those of you that may know, ISIS has dis practically destroyed everything of Nineveh. But let's read what it says here. If you go to Nahum chapter 3 and you look right here, let's take verse 7 here. And it shall come to pass that, well, let me tell you, let me go to verse 1 first. I want to just give you, kind of set the stage here of what's going on. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Okay, the noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and the prancing horses and are, are the jumping chariots. The horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. There is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is no end of their corpus, corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. That is about the case of it today. Even Turkey has, in, has invaded this city, went into Iraq, goes into Nineveh, and what were they there for? To kill the Kurds. We actually shared with you here on Israeli News Live, even, unfortunately, this is what upsets me about the U.S., the Obama administration, that is. I want to clarify that. America is still the greatest nation on this earth, but they are being led right now by the worst president in all of the history of the United States, and that's President Barack Obama. And what Obama has been doing here is he's got a two-sided face there. At one moment he said he supports the Kurds, at the other moment he doesn't. Because when the, when the Turkish went in there and went inside of Iraq without the permission of the government there, which almost caused Russia, by the way, to get involved in this. Putin got in touch with, with the, uh, the Iraqis and let them know that he will support them if they need their help, needs his help. But at that time there, they went in, and who was embedded with them? Special forces from the United States Marine Corps. Well, it wasn't just ISIS getting pounded. It was the Kurds getting pounded. So one week, the Kurds are the friend of Obama. The next week, they're the enemy of Obama. So I would be careful if I was a Kurd trusting the United States. I'd put more trust in Vladimir Putin. But then again, at this point here, I'm a little disappointed 
China with Pre President Putin as well when it comes to the Kurds, because he is also seeing them being pushed around. And I know his big fear is is starting is getting involved in a actual global conflict is one reason why he backs out of that. Anyway, let's move on down to verse seven real quick, looking at this from a prophetic point of view. Here it says, and it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for you? I mean, this is terrible, guys, what's happening. That just lets you know that it's speaking about Nineveh, the ancient city of Nineveh, but in a modern times. And if we look on doubt, I want to share one other thing for you here. And that's in verse uh, 18. And this really kind of sums it up. Now, here, here's interesting because you have to remember, Nineveh was a part of the Assyrian Empire at one time. And we see that the prophet here, Nahum, speaks of the Assyrian Empire as a whole. So even the battle that's going on in Aleppo, which, by the way, those uh, cruise missiles that may have been launched here off of the coast here in the Mediterranean, just north of our position here, may have been Russia launching more scuds, or not scuds, but cruise missiles, in an attempt to help the Syrian, Bashar al-Assad Syrian soldiers there in Aleppo. Not really sure. Well, I have to go back and see if any of this actually has been reported or not. But it sounded like about three, maybe four uh, missiles were launched from the Mediterranean. All right. Anyway, uh, verse uh, 18 says, Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. That seems like that may be a message directly to Bashar al-Assad is what my thought is kind of leaning to, but I can't say for sure. But notice what he says, Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains, and no man gathereth them. Friends, that is letting you know that the Syrian refugee crisis that we're seeing, and it's not just the Syrians, but also from the famous city of Mosul, the northern Iraqi uh, refugees as well. They have fled. They crossed into Turkey. They went from Turkey. They go all the way up into uh, Europe, ended up in Europe, and now there's a major crisis in Europe because it wasn't just families that were displaced by this war, but for some reason, ICE has made sure they send a lot of guys to go with them there, and it's caused more and more problems. Now Europe is getting a taste of what it's like. Chancellor Merkel opened the door for the refugees. Now I can understand there are genuine refugees that need help. I, I, I support that 100%. But when you just open the door, and we know for a fact, and the Slovak uh, government there said to my wife, if you just say you're a Syrian refugee, no papers will be asked of you, and we will give you a place to stay here and a permanent residency card. We know that for a fact. We saw it with our own ears, and that was from a supervisor in the Slovak government. But when all these men came in there, why weren't they back fighting in their own country? I believe that perhaps, and this is only a perhaps, a conjecture that maybe the Obama administration had a greater plan to begin with. And some of those in the European Union, a non-elected government that is, not the individual states, but the EU non-elected members there had been planning all along to do something to justify creating their global military for the European Union. If it was elected officials, it could be a good thing, much like the United States. We have an elected government that controls who's the chief and commander of the armed forces. But in this case here, the EU is not elected officials. And what will happen is you will have a totalitarian regime that will be running that force, and it won't be for fighting the, the external threat. That's what NATO will do for them. It'll be for suppressing the people. What better way to get the people to go along with it then but then to create a crisis in the Middle East, clear the people off the land, take control of Syria, control all the oil and everything like that, and maybe start a whole new kingdom. Who knows what they're planning on doing? But that's another prophecy that we'll talk about later. Or maybe I'll just mention it while we're here. In Daniel 11, remember, when that king of the north, which is the king that is over the entire NATO regime, and that's none other than the Pope of Rome, but when that king of the north, when he saw the troubles, the, the tidings, the words that were troubling him out of the north, which is Russia, and out of the east, which is China, and how they came together, and they are getting actively involved in Syria, that is when he sends all of his ships to make away many, and also countries, it says in the plural. It's Aratzot, the lands, 
not Israel per se, but all the lands around. And that's exactly what NATO is doing. It has troubled them that Russia came in. And the next thing you know, what do we see? We see that Obama sends troops into Syria, little at a time, so the U.S. kind of accepts it with no big deal. They send troops here because, well, they created the Obama created the ISIS problem to begin with and armed them. Well, you know, if you arm them, you don't really want to stop the conflict, do you? You just want to pretend a little bit. Well, Russia comes in. That upset the king of the north. He didn't like it. So he orders NATO's forces, begin to move more artillery here. And to think about it, guys. Right here in a little city called Joppa, that put Nineveh on the map, that made Nahum prophesy of this whole event, we're seeing fulfilled in modern times. One other interesting thing about this famous city here of Joppa is that Peter, the great apostle that Yeshua, Jesus, loved so much, he was residing here just off to my right shoulder here, when he got the vision of that sheet that's let down with all manner of beasts, both clean and unclean beasts were in that sheet. And a voice says, Peter, rise up and kill and eat. And he says, not so, Lord, nothing unclean ever come into my mouth. Think about that for a moment. And so when he said this, the Lord said this to him, this is the very spot that God gave the vision to Peter where he would go northwards here with Cornelius' men and he would go there and baptize him and the man would be filled with the Holy Spirit and the gospel have gone to Jew to Gentile. What a remarkable city. And as you've been watching this, you've been seeing some of the scenes here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast today. Shalom.